All right. So today I have Justin um, running Wizo Media. Uh, he's um, a member of the Done For You Half a Mill Systems Implementation Program who's been scaling his agency like crazy. Yeah. So um, I thought, you know, he's in the same city as me. So I was like, yo, why don't we link up instead of having a Zoom call? What, why don't we find a podcast studio and actually have an in-person uh, chat? Good about idea. um about your journey and about also you know what you're learning what you're what what you know what you're seeing about uh that's working within the agency game yeah thanks for the intro man for sure happy to be here and it's nice to be in person not on zoom 100 <laughs> percent. i've been in this phase where you know to be honest because for me um i'm a really like social person like i get like i've like I love other people's vibrations. I, I love being around other people. So, you know, working from home is definitely something that gets a little bit like like boring at some times. Cause yeah. it, it, I've realized that like, it makes it feel like even though you might be winning in business, it doesn't feel like you're winning. It's not tangible, I think. You, you, you can't really quantify it, yeah. which I think creates, like for me, I was thinking about that the other day. Usually when I start seeing stuff, but like material stuff when mm -hmm. material success comes in i get a lot more flustered than i do with like online numbers like seeing the team growing like the the, the pipeline of leads coming in the numbers yeah. on stripe you know increasing is like that's one thing but i wish i also wish i had like a in-person office funny right. enough sometimes i i think about that yeah yeah because you know i think a lot of people what they forget about uh about business is that um, you know, the thing that matters the most is actually not the growth of your company. It's actually what, like, it's it's who you do it with that matters really the most. So, um, you know, for me, I'm at a point where I'm starting to think into building an actual, like, team, like, locally. Maybe not everyone, but, yeah. um, you know, even, client, you know, members of the team who are, like, in other parts of the world, I'd be yeah. happy to you know, to fly them to Canada and just have them work for here, maybe for a few months at a time. But um, yeah, man, there's something different with companies who are like every day you guys show up at the same place yeah. and um, you just go to war together. I think that's amazing. Yeah, I, I think the online space itself kind of has this wrong. Like a lot of people are talking about, oh, remote this, remote that. Like it's it's very trendy mm -hmm. and it's cool. And I get it, like margins are better and you have more flexibility. The talent pool, you know, is wider. But yeah, like I, I noticed that a lot more people now I see wanting to bring that more in uh, locally. Like I had a good friend of mine who's in Calgary and he's trying to do that now. Like he built a pretty good agency and now he's mm -hmm. actually reverting back from having people around the world and trying to get that locally to just, yeah, yeah. Just talking to a screen all day is is maybe not the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really boring because, you know, if we hit a big week, uh, you know, I'd love to, you know, for us to go out maybe on a on a weekend or on yeah. a Friday, you know, let's go drink some tequila. <laughs> 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 but uh, all right, cool. So um, I had a few questions uh, that I'd love to, to ask you because a lot of people will be watching this who probably don't know you yep. and who'd love to learn more about your story. So before we get into the, you know, tactical stuff and about, you know, a bit more about your business, uh, tell us what you're currently doing just briefly yep. and tell us the story how you actually got to cool. where you're at so as you know i run wizzle media i'm the founder i've launched so i registered the business in december 2020 incorporated it in june of 2021 um since then essentially right now we're working with 14 brands around the world uh e-commerce brands that is so we're doing paid advertising um across multiple ad channels uh we're getting into email and sms now and have recently introduced uh ugc and influencer sourcing as you know what we've talked about some of the stuff in the program um that's pretty much it that's that's where we're at right now we started off as a creative and web design agency actually back then because that's what my background is in but uh, rapidly switched to the e-commerce kind of growth model. Yeah. Why did you switch? Honestly, more recurring revenue than anything else. Like the creative industry is very hard to retain clients. Um, with now some, you know, looking back at it, I could have actually scaled that, but it was, I was so early on in the journey and I was telling myself that like, at, 
I, I might as well do it now than wait too late until it's too sizable and it's hard to really scale back down. Like you would have to fire yeah. people, you would have to let go of clients. Like it, it just gets, it's a hassle. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it early on. And um, I had some friends that were more in the marketing space, not within e -com, but that led me to, yeah, see a bit of a brighter side, I guess. Okay, cool. But how did you end up even in the creative space? Yeah, so if we go all the way back, actually, 2015 was um, when I really started to go hard on YouTube. Like I wanted to, dude, I was in high school. I wanted to become a full-time YouTuber. Like that was it. That was the dream. That was the goal. I was nice. making videos, uh, gaming videos. Um, and that led to me developing so many skills. Like I wanted to make my own logos. I wanted to make my own headers, design, like everything. So I started to learn like Photoshop, Illustrator, and then it went into like video editing. I wanted to be like a better editor. So I learned um, Premiere Pro, actually it was Sony Vegas Pro back then. And then um, got more into the video effects space. So I kind of became an, like an all-in-one like graphic motion designer, video editor. Like I was pretty well versed like creative wise. And after high school, it was only natural for me to get into college and go to uh, go into graphic design, which is what I did. So yeah. I, I did like a three year um, degree in, in graphic and web design. Um, and while I was doing that, like I graduated officially in June of 2021. So you can understand with the timeline that there was like an overlap with the business and, and that. And uh, it's pretty much it. it. It came from like necessity, I think. Like I wanted to look better just online. Like I wanted to, I really was taking this seriously back then. And uh, yeah, I wanted to learn design. So I got into that college, started the agency that way because that's all I knew. Okay, cool. Now, you know, starting an agency kind of like have to be focused on making money. So yeah. did, did you have a moment where you're like, okay, I need to actually start making money with this instead of having it be a thing where you actually are doing it for selfish reasons. Yeah, um, pretty early on, I started getting clients actually. Back in 2015, I think itself, I got my first couple of clients mm. um, from Twitter. Twitter was like very big back then. That's nice. when I popped off. Like in 2015, the gaming space was like all over Twitter. Um, I had a couple friends and I was like in these kind of gaming clans back then. Like people were kind of making these clans like, uh, you know, trick shotting, like all this Call of Duty stuff. Um, and I just started getting commissioned for these deals. But I mean, that was like, you know, 10, $20 gigs, like here and there it was nothing too mm -hmm. serious. It was really like in September of 2020 when I was like, I was just getting started with my last year of college. And I was like, oh shit, like the end is coming. Like I could really feel it and I was scared. I, I don't know what to do. Like I, and it's coming, like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go work for like a video game studio? Which was one of my first thought. Mm -hmm. I was like, no. I don't really see myself doing that. Um, and I had just reconnected with one of my best friends from the end of elementary school and pretty much all throughout, or at least half, the first half of high school. And I had just reconnected with him and he was doing pretty good with his business. And he kind of- Share numbers. Sure. <laughs> How much was he making? Um, I don't remember exactly back then, but a couple couple tens of thousands of dollars, like, he was, like a month. Like he was making something that like no, no 19 year old like should be making essentially like it was it was out of this world for me at least like i was i was an apple part-time employee back then so i was not doing too bad i was actually like one of the highest paid like hourly you know people in my in, in my like proximity like yeah across my friends and everything but then when i saw that i was like all right i'm, I'm nothing like i'm a like yeah this, this means nothing yeah. so it showed me something different honestly and that's like I'm gonna attribute a lot of credit to him. He's one of our common friends. Um, lots of credit to him. Like if it wasn't from him, I probably would have never started. Yeah. And this brings up a point that's pretty important, right? I'm in this inner circle and uh, apparently uh, Meta's or Facebook's team just did an, uh, um, like um, a study where they found that the more, the more, um, the more connections you have with affluent people, like even online, yeah the more the more like chances you have of actually going upstream in your in your level in yeah. life right i mean meaning financially most most of the time and you know these are you know things that have existed for forever but now there are actual studies done that you know if you're even it let's not even say like in real life like if you're friends if you follow if you're if you look at people's stories if you um you know you keep up with people who are more affluent you literally have a higher chance of becoming, you know, 
better and you know wealthier and richer uh, than you would be if you actually weren't following uh, people who are actually winning in life. So right now, if your social media is full of people who who are broke, who post dumb shit all the time, guess what? That's what you're becoming. Yeah, it's not even about who you hang around. It's literally who you hang around online that matters even yeah. more, right? So, so yeah. I mean, if Justin had not met, you know, not reconnected with his friend. He probably wouldn't be here making all kinds of money online. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, guys, it's so important. I even remember myself when um, when I quit school the first, I mean, I, I was about to say the first time, but it's not like I quit multiple times. Huh. But uh, when I quit school, when I left school in 2018, the reason why I left is because I got connected with, uh, you know, a few guys who are making, you know, like, you know, multiple five figures a month, uh, probably even more at 23 years old. You know, he was driving a Porsche, not not a 911, but he was driving the, the truck one. And I was like, whoa, what is this? What's this about? I literally quit not because the opportunity, which was a door to door sales job, was good. I just quit because I was like, yeah, if this 23 year old can do it, I'm on it. Yeah. And just... You know, it didn't necessarily lead me to success, but at least it led me to the path that I'm I'm on right now. It's all about getting started. It's like taking one step after another. And I think like what I here's the thing: before that, there was a period. I'm not gonna lie. Like before even reconnecting with them, I was getting into podcast. I was getting into like the kind of self help movement. Like in 2020, I had a very big event happening. That is, is not the the whole. I don't even know if we were allowed mm -hmm. to say it, but this whole world event that happened um in in march april 2020 but at the same time um i had actually parted ways with my girlfriend which we were together for like over two years at that point um finally it ended up being a break of like three months but during that time i started working out like every day self-help podcast like everything and i haven't stopped since like i, I think if that had not happened also part of that would have never happened afterwards yeah. but it just leads me back to saying that like i had seen a lot of people do it online and like make it but it kind of felt distant. It was like, yeah, well, you know, and I forgot to say, but like I tried drop shipping also back then. Kind of like every every kid, you know, during that era. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, let me give it a shot. I, I created a store. It was like, it was too complicated. I don't I didn't like it. But seeing somebody they knew, I, I like literally grew up with that person. Like I, I slept at his house, like many times met his parents. Like I've been snowboarding many times with that guy. I was like, shit, like if, like I, I know him. It's like, what's different? Like, if he can do it, why can't I? I? I think that was it. It was. It was not envy. It was more like, dude. Like, if he can do it, we come from the same background, same hometown, like same, same everything. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. I think I I, I attribute a lot of it to him. Yeah. No. It's, it's it's one of the best things, and that's why for me it's like I'll join an inner circle. I'll join a mastermind. Not necessarily because I expect to learn more stuff. I think you know you rarely ever learn new stuff by joining like. Um, by joining like you know groups or inner circles or masterminds, but especially the, at a certain point, I think when you start, it's yeah. like you got everything to learn about. But it, it comes a point where it's just yeah, diminishing. Well, it's it's yeah, it's the same stuff. It's just yeah. different, you know, do, you know, doing it in a different way. But it's seeing other people do numbers where you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on here? Like, whoa, 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 like, hey, like I see you. You're not anything special, so you're giving me proof that I can. I'm also allowed to touch these numbers, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, guys, surround yourself with people who are doing better and and you'll most likely end up doing better. Yeah. Cool. So break down what you're, what you're currently, where you're currently at with your agency um, for people who are, and, you know, just share like your, your progress, your timeline on the growth of your business too. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Um, look, in, in the first couple of years, like the first five years or so of like freelancing, I did nothing. It was like maybe 5k in five years and that's like a huge stretch that's like you know it could, could be 1k like i'm saying i'm like guesstimating but it was like very small commissions here and there mm -hmm. um within the first month i made enough to more than triple what i was making part-time at my other job at apple which led me to think like huh like i need to make a choice here and it was like it was so time consuming too because i was i was working full-time i had a 25 hour a week part-time job and then I was trying to start a business. It was like all of those together, I was, I was, you know, I was working a lot. Yeah. Um, so I quit Apple in February, took a dip because uh, I was just trying to find myself. Honestly, I was like, all right, what do I do now? 
Um, then what can I say? It ramped up a lot, like during the summer of last year. Um, well, Revenue-wise, we need numbers. We need numbers. We need numbers. So during the summer of 2021, uh, which basically last year, the time you know recording this, um, I I actually reached like the six-figure run rate just you know on, on a yearly basis, and I kind of hovered around that for the whole summer, and honestly, pretty much all year, like I was hovering around that mark pretty much until Black Friday last year, which obviously being in the e-commerce space, like I had performance deals, which that more than doubled like the usual revenue that I, I was used to. It's almost tripled mm -hmm. um, during that time. And then since I was, I was honestly scared. I was thinking to myself, like, it's a fat, you know, it's probably gonna drop back down. It did not, like it, it just kept growing all year long, which we're talking about 2022. And now, you know, a month later, like we, we, we partnered together in, I think in June, uh, or like early June, I think, or like mid-June or yeah. something like that. And like the team grew a lot. And not only that, I recouped the investment and uh, which, you know, if you're watching this, you know how much the program is. Like you've, I've recouped the investment, made more than the the, the initial investments. Um, and we're now like at the time of recording. The, I mean, I kind of guess like for me, funny enough is like, team size is also very important like i've always dreamt of having a pretty good team like i, I like being surrounded by people and we're now i think at four full timers four part-time and um three like contractors so kind of gives you an idea of like yeah. we're able to sustain a team size like that and be be pretty profitable so yeah 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 and uh yeah justin actually funny enough you're the like up until when you signed up you're the i think you're the highest paying customer that we've had at least on a one payment on basis. a one payment yeah yeah because um you know most people um you know will try to get a discount we'll try yeah. to get this pay pay over three months yeah and uh yeah when you came in you were like yo i'd rather just pay one time yeah and to be honest you're the client who's seen the most amount of growth who's joined the program in 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 the first month of joining the program you know you've you've added like multiple six figures in revenue mm. in the first 30 days right mm -hmm. so uh would you say that committing that kind of money and you know by the way we can we can say the amount you paid i think you yeah, paid yeah, you yeah. paid what in almost like, well in canadian with like because there's like a amex takes like a 2.5 percent fee on top of that it was like 19.8 yeah yeah so you paid essentially 20 grand yeah to join the program pretty much yeah and um yeah you made that and some um would you say that spending that kind of money helped you like be like okay yeah let's dial it in let's actually lock in and yeah i i had a lot, a lot of people online that i you know i follow and and somewhat look up to like a lot of people that um i'm thinking names like right now like maybe people watching this you know might know them like trey cockrum richard you like a couple of people i just follow online and one term that i was like seeing between them like a lot was like be the type of client that like you want your clients to be right and i was like I want somebody like I'm, I'm myself and somebody who's very straightforward. Like you can ask everybody around my, like around me, if I want something, I go and get it. And like, I'm very, I don't play, like I don't play around the pot. Like if I make a decision, I'm going to go for it. Like I'm, I'm, you know, might be telling my girlfriend, like, hey, I'm going to buy a new camera. Like that's what literally what I did. I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about buying a camera next day. It's like, it's done, you know, done. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to yeah. linger. Like I think decision fatigue and decision lag kills you. Like if you just have to think about something, if you're on a call and you're like, yeah, let me think about it. Like that kills you. And for me specifically, I've had cases in the past where, you know, I, I'm like, I've joined multiple other programs in the past. And, I, you know, there's a lot of cases like, ah, you know, I'm going to think about it. It's a lot of money. Like, I let, you know, let me come back to you. And, and I did like a lot of those I've actually eventually bought. But these couple of days of like, fuck, you know, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to do it? Am I not? Like, is this worth it? Just dude, just commit, commit, do it. Like, I'm going to make that money back. Worst comes to worst. I've lost some money, that's it. But like chances are, as you said earlier, like you're not gonna learn something that's life changing, but you might learn like one little nugget of information that will change everything. Yeah. So it's about that one little nugget of thing that like you might be doing something very slightly different than I'm already doing. And that's what's you know gonna change the game. So Yeah, hundred percent. Cause you know, if you're already doing thirty K, fifty K a month, like you don't necessarily like the of course, it's not necessarily new knowledge that you're missing, but it's the way that this knowledge should be implemented, right? Yeah. So uh, I think Hormozis, you know, was kept kept saying this, but I didn't really recognize it until 
I you know I read this book you know this book that he's he recommended I, I don't know who who else recommended it to me but I know you've read it but it's the ready fire aim thing mm -hmm. and um when I read that book I realized that like okay there are actual steps to scaling a business yeah. right because you know I know right now I know a million things I could do to add an extra you know 100k 200k a month right like today yeah but the thing is just because I know something that can grow our revenue does not mean that's the thing that I should be focusing on right now. Yeah. Right? So when you're doing 30K, 50K, 100K a month, um, you need to realize that it's not that you miss knowledge. It's not that you're dumb. I mean, you're already doing, you're already making half a mil, seven figures a year. Like you're, you're, you're good. You're doing better than most people, right? But the thing you lack is the perspective on the right steps yeah. at the right time, right? Because, uh, you know, you can go and build a SaaS product and, you know, but you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be some good recurring revenue. But it's like, yeah, it's going to cost you two years of building it when yeah. you could have just dialed it in something else and made I, a few millions. Basically, it is, as you're saying, yeah, we, we all have it. It's just about like, it's, just, it's like a puzzle. Like you, you have, it's all on the table, but all the puzzle pieces are the same color. So it's like, how do you put it together? Like yeah. it, it's, it, it all seems like good ideas. Like there's nothing good, nothing bad. It's like, how do I just piece that? together yeah 100%. i think that's the hardest part to figure out yeah what is what why why did you because you know we've been we've been we've been uh in france for for a minute before you joined the program yeah uh but why did you join the program in the first place knowing that there are like a million other services out there i think i'm gonna relate that back to the earlier story of like my good friend i i have something like for me i i'm very visual i gotta see it i gotta believe it like and I had, it led to some very good things with my very close friend of mine. I'm like, I kind of listened to some of the stuff he was saying. I'm here now. So it's like, now you're a friend of mine. I'm seeing it too. And I'm seeing like the next level by looking at you. So I'm like, might as well do the same thing with you. It's like, might as well kind of commit with you. I've kind of, it seems like I've did the same move twice, but in two different like scenarios. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's why. And I, I was also in like a pretty big pain, I would say. Like I, I was, I felt the pain of like being, stagnant like, i i just hate that yeah so, why why were you stagnant what do you think was the was the obstacle um i think it was not even being stagnant it was kind of like always like I, i was growing and then i was losing all that growth like i was getting clients but then like end of april early may we lost five that was like 40 percent of our clients gone just like that yeah. and that scared me i was like why well like why is that happening some of them were getting good results some weren't Some of the contracts were just very badly set up. The other ones was like expectations. And we had like no lead flow coming in to like, or at least not enough to like sustain, you know, such a loss. And that also led me like, I really want to build something. I, I do get a lot of pride, like selfishly, I get a lot of pride in like what I build. And I feel like the client results are a bit of a reflection, or at least my pride is a bit of a reflection from that, you know, the client success that we have. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, like I took an ego hit. I was like, like that that has to change. Like if you know yeah. we lost five, like we must be doing something wrong. So let me try and figure that out. Let me go and see people that might know what I'm doing wrong, and let me try and fix it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I see a lot of people who. So there's this thing that I I've realized with business. Okay, and I get this from Grant Cardone, right? Yeah. Uh, first rule number one: never rely on a single customer. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't care if how customer centric you are i don't care if you love your customers i don't care if you if your your life depends on it never rely on a single customer yeah. and when i say a single customer i literally mean like don't even rely on 10 yeah you need to get so big that like no single no five customers can cause you stress yeah. right and the only way you can do that is if you're really really good at acquisition yeah right so You know, I, you know, I have a few customers who scale, you know, they go from like, you know, 10K to 30K to 50K and they're like, okay, now let me take a, 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 sh a short break and let me, let me fix the operation. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I promise you that you're going to probably lose 20% of the customers that you've been selling in the past 60, 90 days, right? Yeah. So that means that if you take the time to take a break, you're going to be back at the same place where you, you signed up in the program at, yeah. right? So I'm like, never stop lead flow never stop acquiring customers i don't care if you have to hire a million people but hire better people who are better at operations right people yeah. have already solved it so you don't have to 
stop acquiring customers because if you stop acquiring customers something like you know what happened to you in yeah. april happens where you're like okay now i'm making good money uh but then a month at the end of the month you lose all, you know almost half 40 percent of your revenue and you're like yeah. oh my god so yeah that that's true and i i'd rather like now looking back at it is like i'd rather be content have enough customers that don't leave and cut into my margins by having like you know vas or, or a team like somebody reaching out to people instead of like being like all right guys we don't need you anymore like we're cool we got clients but then s starting the cycle again like in a month you know yeah. a, of time so because you never know it's like there's always it's seasons like sometimes it's not even r like relying on you like there's just sometimes um there's events outside of our control too that might affect you know client flow so it's like i, I gotta keep it going whatever happens um especially now going into q4 or i mean good and a q3 yeah. q4 so yeah cool yeah um you know what are the what are the things that you thought were cool within the program that you think helped you um you know it could be it could be you know either stuff that we actually did that you did or it could even just be a, a shift in mindset and yeah. perspective that helped you you know add an extra multiple six figures in 30 days in revenue yeah um i'd say bell yeah bell shout out to bell <laughs> bell yeah. will see this for yeah, sure yeah she will <laughs> but she's good she's really good like to, to i guess to give some context you know um she helped us build some systems and if i'm not mistaken i was one of the first people that you guys did that for um or at least like, in the first yeah. wave like, like of yeah the second person that second person yeah. okay and you guys had all of it mapped out but i kind of threw like a huge curveball at her i was like nah like i already got software it's like i i really really want them on this software and she kind of explained to me she's like nah, no and I, to be honest i was a bad client like i was i was kind of i was try, trying to play it my way it was like cool gave her like 24 hours she learned all of her softwares she was able to integrate all of them better than i could have ever done myself um i was kind of blown away honestly by that so that was like one of the best parts um then what i would say is also how everybody kind of has a key role within the team i st i feel like even a lot of big educational company are still very centralized like it's one single person that delivers all of it they're the face they're the knowledge and they're also the ones like delivering the help right they're the ones like that you see out there on youtube or like on social media they post the content then they're the ones like delivering the course and then they're the ones like building the whole back end of the course they're the ones like also chatting with you like they're doing everything mm -hmm. which i think you can feel it like they're 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 generally good but they're not specifically good whereas like you got people in all areas which i think that's good like you got um high sum which i can just like anytime of the day like this dude's online 24 hours a day like pretty much i can just shoot him a text he's, he's gonna answer me like he still pops on some of our team calls mm -hmm. helps my team with like a couple issues um so i feel like like to be honest I, I didn't really pay for a program i paid more for i think the the expertise like more the uh, i think of this almost like consulting is like is more yeah. what it is like you because there's a lot more than just i mean there is yeah yeah there's there there is like some part of it that is programmed but i'm not gonna lie and sit here that they've went through all of it i maybe did like five ten percent of like the content <laughs> Like I went through like such a small part of it, yeah. but only what I needed. And from like what I gathered, I was like, cool, let me just like put the pieces together, reach out to the right people in the team from the expectations that were set in the content. Yeah. And I got I got what I wanted and, yeah. and needed. A lot of people really don't understand this, but we're kind of like, um, cause the way that I want to build client acquisition at IO is I kind of like want to build a company where you go to and like, like everything is done yeah like like it's not oh we're just great at appointment setting we can book a bunch of meetings for you no 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 no. we don't just do that we help you with your offer we help you with your appointment setting you know for you you were already making multiple five figures a month uh and more you didn't necessarily need to learn how to do outreach or how we manage the setters all that good stuff right yeah you needed something that can actually help you sustain more scale right yeah. and that's where we set up your back-end systems yeah. to help you onboard more customers make it a seamless uh, yeah. uh, process and even the accountability systems for your for your growth team and uh, onboarding the team too i think that was something i was missing and i've mm -hmm. really polished that over the last couple of days actually but making sure that i had systems that 
you know, just like you would want to turn on ads or email campaigns or whatever, and like you want leads to come in now, like, you, you know, you want to be able to, to control the lead flow. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know who it was, but I read somewhere at some point, somebody was like, you need to control the lead flow of clients, but also like the lead flow of like employees, like team members, which is now what I'm trying to control too. Like I've got ads, I've got posts all the time and like anywhere, everywhere, even if we don't need them, I've got funnels, automations, just, I treat employees just like I do with like, clients now it's like yeah. i try and treat the acquisition the same way yeah talking about lead flow and hiring i'm currently looking for an operator <laughs> uh sales people for uh for to help our customers sell and uh also another thing i'm looking for is a systems integrator to help bell fulfill on the the back end system so if you're good with um you know go high level um google sheets all that good stuff um you can probably dm me on instagram or facebook and uh, I will give you a role. Um, but no, 100%. A lot of people don't really understand this when it comes to acquisition. Like when you're hiring people, it's the same thing as hiring, as getting a client, right? Totally. So I get people who are looking for, you know, maybe like they're building a growth team, yeah. right? You know, we can talk about growth team after. But uh, when you're building a growth team, mm -hmm. you've got to realize that um, one post in one single Facebook group is not going to get you five people ready to work nah. for you on commission. No. Nah. And this whole thing about hiring people, like, dude, everybody's talking about hiring people overseas. They're like, you don't necessarily need people that know what they're doing. Like, you can train them up. Like, that's what that that's what's being taught out there. Like, that's what everybody tells people. Is like, dude, just pay. Like, it's basically cheap labor. Is is literally what people are talking about. And I I hate that. Like, I've I've moved away from that as soon as possible. Because, dude, the amount of time that you lose, I've did that with like one of my first full time hires. Um, it was not good experience, man. I, I like I had to fire that person after like a month because it was like it was just horrific. Mm -hmm. Everything was goes down was going down because what they say is like go and hire somebody for cheap, but they don't talk about the training and any everything you need to do afterward to get that person to the level that you want. Yeah. Whereas I was for a while I cut into margins a lot just to get like better talent. And I still do, honestly. Like I still have like I have some pretty good people on the team that like make it so that i cut into our margins but shit like they they save me time yeah they save me time so yeah. and and yeah time's everything 100 most people don't really get this they think that you know you should be prioritizing margins they should be prioritizing this this and this yeah but it's like guys you have to realize that there's there's so much money that can be made that if you're opt if you're optimizing to be profitable you actually won't make, you will never ever make mo money where you're like, oh my God, this is insane, yeah. right? You always think, make money where you, you know, you're maybe your close circle, you make more than them, maybe even combined, yeah. but you'll never touch, you know, millions and millions and probably multiple eight, nine figures, right? Trying to optimize for profit. Yeah. Um, and until you realize this, and I think that's the good thing about making money, okay? And this is, I'm going to go on a different tangent, but... Um, you know, a few days ago, I was, you know, I woke up, you know, maybe it was the weekend, uh, and, you know, I saw that someone had hit my car, right? And I was like, oh, my God, someone hit my car. Huh. I'm pissed and this and that and this and that. But I was like, you know what? Am I going to waste today being upset that someone, you know, hit my car and that I have to now fix it? Or would I rather trade money to fix this car? and yeah. at least save my day from being upset. Like, cause if I spent the day being upset that someone hit my car, I just wasted a full day, probably an another day of thinking about it. I'm trading my life being upset for a materialistic thing yeah. that is actually stupid, right? And money at the end of the day, cause like you can't fix it yourself. You still have to pay for it. Yeah. So you're like double jab, like it, it's, it's- So it's like, yeah. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that when you have money, and let's say this could also be a business. Yeah. Never trade your time, your your like your thinking to something that you can pay to get fixed. Mm -hmm. So in a way that I don't want to spend today worrying about a car when I can pay to not have to think about a car being yeah. being being you know being hit. You know, like yeah. I never want to sacrifice today. Like I don't want to ever have to not. I mean, having this conversation with you, I don't want to be thinking about oh. You know, have to pay for this. Oh, this margin, yeah. this, this. No, it's like no. I'll pay for that. Yeah. Anything I can pay for, I'll never think twice about. Even like you think 
you know, people working a regular job is like, there's so many things you can remove, like meal prep or you know, laundry, uh, uh, like gardening, like all that kind of stuff. You can get people for, it's to be honest, like if you were like, ah, you know, but we can't pay for it. Like, dude, dude, don't tell me you cannot spare. Like, I don't know, you know, like an extra, let's just say like 200 bucks a month. And yeah. that should give you like somebody who comes and like mows the lawn, like somebody who comes and cleans the house like at least once a month, like is like, you don't even have to think about it. So anybody, it's just not business, I think. Like anybody yeah. watching this, just it, it can apply for them. Yeah, no, people have to stop viewing money as something that is scarce. It's not scarce. And as long as you keep sacrificing your time and and thinking energy over because you don't want to expense yeah. money, like, yeah, you're, 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 you're fucked essentially yeah you're never gonna have enough uh okay cool so uh for your agency what count what current acquisition channels are you currently leveraging to acquire clients so at the moment it's we got emails which have always been like our main way um it's how we got our first client is like it's literally how i got my first client yeah um so there, there's emails there's linkedin um there's content, which is like pretty big for, for us. Like I've started content very early, like last year yeah. in I think May of 2021, or I started sporadically like in February of 2021. But as I explained earlier in the backstory, like I had a lot of content experience already before. Mm -hmm. I started for business like in May of 2021, um, religiously, like at least once a week, then it came uh, two times a week. Then I think in December it became three times a week and I've been holding three times a week since then. Mm -hmm. Content is pretty big. It's starting to book us quite a lot of appointments. Um, ads were there for a little while. Right now we're just doing retargeting. Um, IG, IG DMs. And yeah, so it's pretty diversified. Like There's a lot. But the bulk of um, clients come from a mix, I would say from emails and content. Yeah, because I would say like they're they're so intertwined. Like a lot of people that we get emails or that we send emails to, they like we use our content within the emails, and as soon as they interact with like a piece of content, they 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 can get pulled into like another sequence, and then it becomes like content and emails are very intertwined. So usually, if somebody books in a call, they've like from an email, they've at least consumed like two or three pieces of content too. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. If if you're an agency owner or really any service business who doesn't have content online that prospects can view before or even after booking a call or even after getting on a sales call with you i can probably say that you're doing five times if not ten times less money than you would be making if you had content to nurture this audience uh because i'm i'm, I'm not sure if i mentioned this but i once maybe like a month or two ago i looked at our numbers right i mm. was like hey how many people have actually bought this month uh who didn't know me yeah who had n never seen my pieces of content, right? And I realized that only 5% of people bought without having consumed any piece of content and the remaining 95% had consumed a piece of content, right? Yeah. That means that if I did not have the content that I have online right now, yeah. I'd be making what, like 19 times yeah. less money every month? Plus, Would I don't you? know about you, but like, I, I enjoy making content. Like, that was my initial goal. I wanted to be a YouTuber. It's like, I wanted <laughs> to make content for a living. Yeah. Then I went into the creative world. Like, I was good at video editing and stuff. So, I I don't even mind it. Like, I genuinely enjoy making content. Yeah. So, if it can also help the business, that's like a plus. Yeah. I mean, for me, I don't necessarily think I've always wanted to make content. But um, I guess I'm extroverted and I like to be, you know, to... To, to, to talk to be in front of people so i yeah. don't mind that but uh one peak one thing that most people don't understand is that you don't have to like it in the beginning and you to be honest you, sh you will not even like it because building content guys it, it takes a lot of energy especially in the first three months yeah for sure because you have to build it and then you have to get in front of a camera and then you have to be like hey good morning so today i'd like to talk about yeah. this. Da, 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 da. and then you're like oh i forgot this thing and then you have to re re let's say if you're using losing using loom then you'll stop loom and then you'll start it back again and then you're like oh my god i forgot to say this and then you have to restart again yeah like that thing will drain the hell out of your for sure your, your, you know your energy so for me what i say is what i recommend to my clients is like you know just get in front of a camera just use loom you don't need use a google doc you know write out the stuff that you actually want to cover so this is it okay and i got this from nick cosman right because hmm. nick cosman used to put out you know a lot of bangers 
just from Google Docs. And uh, the old way of building video sales letter was to do it through slides, right? Yeah. But last year, I tried doing the slide method, but it's like I only wrote so much, so much of the stuff that I actually want to talk about. So I was like, if I don't see the stuff that I want to talk about, I'm going to forget it. Because yeah. if you're trying to make a point, if you're trying to share a sales an argument about you know your your product, your yeah. service, you kind of like can't skip something. Because certain things, if you forget to say it, it's like it could literally be the difference between having a you know 50% closing rate and literally 10%, yeah. right? So when I saw Nick doing the, the Google Doc route, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So from then on, I've just been, you know, every time that I want to write a piece of content, I get on Google or I, I'll start writing it on my notes on my phone and then I'll put it on a Google Doc and then I'll just launch uh, Loom and I'll literally read everything that I want to talk about. And it has been the the best thing that has, has ever been, you know, created <laughs> yeah you can hardly forget anything when you do yeah. that and it's also you add in like you, you, <laughs> i think it goes back to the basics of like elementary school because like they literally taught us that back then it was like make a powerpoint have bullet points on top of it add value when you talk mm -hmm. doing the same thing again it's like basic life skills are the thing that we forgot that yeah. like are just coming back people want like simple shit so you write stuff down put it like put some bullet points and then expand on it like go on a tangent you know in front of the screen and that that's how you add value yeah so. yeah 100 percent. but yeah content is king guys i mean look at anyone who's making you know you know a lot of money online okay uh i don't know anyone who's in the online space because the online marketing space is pretty small but the people yeah. who are making you know eight nine you know figures or more multiple nine figures a year they're the people who are in your face from 6 a.m. till 6 a.m. the next day. Every industry, real estate, like you mentioned Grant Cardone earlier, like yeah. there's every every single industry, there is there at least most of them, um, they're, they're, they're out there. Like you, you, you see them on YouTube, you see them everywhere. Yeah. So there's, those are the people that will make the money. Like recently, I think, I think we talked about that recently, but one guy that popped off out of nowhere, like the Tate brothers is like, content is what they're making like they're starting to bank off of their courses and everything yeah why because they're everywhere they're making content they're on tiktok they're on youtube they're on instagram they're like they've conquered the internet with mass content mm -hmm. so proves yeah, the point 100 percent. yeah you can definitely learn a lot from people who are who are in different verticals but who, yeah. who are doing the same thing yeah. yeah cool so um one thing that I want to talk about is, you know, leveraging a growth team, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when you did start, we did uh, kind of like build a growth team for you. Yeah. Uh, we did, you know, after that, you, you know, we, you can explain how the growth team works. But yeah. uh, I'd love to for you to share your feedback around this this concept. Uh, and maybe I can break it down for people. But what a growth team is essentially is traditionally, if you wanted to build an appointment setting team, there are really a few ways you can go about it. You can go to uh, onlinejobs.ph or Facebook groups, find virtual assistants that you pay $3 an hour. Mm -hmm. They'll do your outreach for you. Yeah. When I was running an appointment setting agency, I used to leverage $3 an hour virtual assistants. Yep. And, um, and that's what most people will do. All they will try to go find some commission only people who are yep. willing to book appointments for you, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, over the last, you know, in the last um, few months, um, you know, I realized like, hey, what is the best way for me to book? And this is actually applied to my own business. I was like, what is the best way for me to start booking more meetings, right? If I had the perfect scenario, I realized that the perfect scenario would be me to actually do, do my own appointment setting because sure. I understand the offer. I understand the service. I understand the market better than anyone else. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, what if I hired people who know as much as me, maybe yeah. even more than me, and actually have them be part of my appointment setting team, right? Yeah. And that's where I started calling it a growth team, yeah. Because um, I didn't want to call it an appointment setting team or yeah. you know a BDR or BDRs, whatever. Yeah. So I just decided to call it growth teams, right? And uh, so that's what it is. Yeah. So just so in your case, what we did is we went into agencies, uh, eight you know groups with yep. uh, with other agency owners, and we're like, hey, uh, we're looking to hire you know a few growth specialists to join your agency and to help you book meetings, and. Um, yeah, talk about your experience with that with that yep. infrastructure. So, first of all, it makes a lot of sense because um, I think some things that, that that can sometimes be missing with VAs is the understanding of the industry. Is they're good at executing, 
which there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to building relationships, which exactly as you said, like I've noticed a significant increase in meeting book rate when I was taking care of the conversations versus when, you know, VAs were, were taking care of it. Mm-hmm. So having a growth team or having, again, as you said, BDRs, whatever you might want to call it, is they can replicate to some extent, at least to a much better extent, um, this connection that you have with people. Like they understand what's going on. They understand the flow of the conversation. They understand like where this person is at right now, where they want to get to, what do you do as a business? How do you fit inside of that? And how you can kind of move the conversation to that point. So... And they're going off script too. Like what we're using is frameworks. It's not scripts, right? Like scripts is just copy and paste. Like you do mm-hmm. the same thing for everyone. Now it's just frameworks, the ideology of like how you reach out to people, the styles of responses you might get, but all of it is custom. Like there's no set in stone copy and paste templates. So this definitely, I'm not going to say it leads to more meetings. It leads to better meetings, I think is what it leads to. Um, it's it, just the quality and, itself is is better, and it's it's not it's just it's not just better quality meetings, but it's it's like the effort invested into those you generating those meetings is is like is almost like nothing because once they know the channel, once they know the 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 three steps four step process for the conversation flow, once they know the uh, you know that they have to send this link if the prospect is interested, yeah. or send them to your Facebook group when they're inter- they're not yet interested in booking a call. It's just autopilot because now you don't have to manage them. You just give them you know the hey, end of day report, beginning of the day uh, yeah. uh, you know status thing to fill out. But after that, they just go and do their own thing. That's it, right? and it's a KPI based you know position, so it's pretty easy to see like do they hit numbers or not. Uh, it's pretty black and white. Like yeah. it, it's not like having like a media bar as an example, where it's like, all right, like there, there's a lot of you know variables to it. Um, I, I would say the biggest one affecting us right now is the fact that it's the middle of summer. Like everybody's away. Like open rates across emails, um, every single channel is like more than I mean less than half than usual because it's summer. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, one of the specific cases I remember is like a meeting that one of my growth specialists had booked in July, and he was able to feed some of that information to um, our, our like sales sales rep essentially, and and he he told him like all the conversation that he had, the pain points that he uncovered, and like it also helps coach the sales team in how they should lead the conversation. Um, so yeah, it's it, it it does add a nice variety to the type of outreach that we do. Yeah. Um, scripts still work, but that I think it solidifies our outreach process, is what I would say. Yeah. Cool. So let's go into more general stuff uh, about, you know, growing and, you know, starting to see success. Yeah. Um, how would you say that, you know, winning has changed you as a person? That's an interesting question. Um, I think I'm still trying to find an answer to that myself. Uh, I, I do deal with a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot, a lot of it. Um, something for the last two years and a half now. I've done something, you know. I've I've said I've been going to the gym and stuff, but I've also been training my brain. Like I've I've been speaking with a psychologist like biweekly mm-hmm. since then for a lot of reasons. Um, but one of them is like keeping up with all of that, which I believe. Like if I exercise my like my philosophy was like I go to the gym like physically to exercise my body, while I yeah. need somebody to help me exercise my mind. Like I need to be able to like juggle with thoughts. Um, so i've been working a lot with my relationship with money in the last like six to seven months Mm -hmm. um it's skewed like it's not the best i've always i've I've been very scared i have a lot of scarcity within me still um scared of making moves scared of i think the biggest one which i hear a lot of big shots talking about that like i'm talking like real real big guys like homozi said that on the podcast which he was like probably all of it comes from like a deep fear of like losing it all like to some extent like you you just always have that inner fear and i have that Mm. so what i would say is like so far how winning changed me it's brought all of these things like to the surface like yeah Yeah. insecurities like everything that i did not really know i had yeah they brought like it brought them to the surface which now like i have to deal with them like i have to deal through them i have to understand and build a better relationship with money Mm -hmm. um 
I mentioned something earlier, like I think the biggest thing right now that I'm dealing with is um, I am trying and starting to sometimes get some form of materialistic uh, objects to, 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 to help me with that, to, to make my environment a little bit more luxurious, to kind of help me push through that. Um, because like for me, one of the big things is like paying salaries, I got no problem with that. Seeing the numbers come in, got no problem with that. Like spending multiple tens of thousands you know, of dollars per month like on, on softwares and everything, no problem with that. Because it's numbers on a screen. It's like, I'm almost like an accountant mind when I deal with that. Mm -hmm. By doing it in person, like going to a shop, like a physical store and seeing the number on it and like tapping for it and having all the stuff like in my hands, that's scary. Like mm -hmm. all of these things itch is, is what I'm trying to deal with right now. So yeah. Yeah, there's this concept uh, I got from Taylor Welch where he says uh, it's called normalization, mm -hmm. right? Where every level that you get at, you actually have to normalize it. Yeah. Meaning... You, you know, you can do it with, you know, a materialistic thing like, you know, maybe getting a nice car, right? So let's say you start making, you know, 50K a month and you're like, you know what? Uh, but like, you know, maybe right now you don't necessarily have something that proves that you're actually making the kind of money that you're making. Yeah. Uh, well, if you don't actually normalize and actually make your life, I know a lot of people are like, oh, don't upgrade your lifestyle, yeah. don't do this. But that could actually be a stupid thing because... If you never normalize success, then it will always be something that's that's new, something that you're not used to, something yeah. that's like um, something that it's like a one-time thing, yeah. right? But guess what? You're always afraid of things that you know are not going to come back. You're always yeah. afraid of losing them, right? Yeah. So, uh, and this is also something. This is why I ended up getting my car because I was like, you know what? You know, I'm making so much money every month, and I'm like, but I'm still driving a, a thirty thousand dollar car you know yeah it's like w why am i actually in the first place making all this kind of money and what actually proves that i'm making this kind of money because yeah stripe might tell me that i you know have a few you know whatever just made 30k in a day but where is the proof because our mind of course there is this process of the mind that you know will believe whatever you just yeah. think but trust me you know when shit is not there like Come, I think we can link that back to like having a physical space of work. Like if we had an office, that's the thing with online businesses. I feel it's much harder to quantify success because if you have a physical business, then at some point you get a bigger office. You see the team growing. There's more people sitting at their desks. You got to buy more material. Mm -hmm. You see like new faces, you, all of that. Like you can see it. Us, it's on a dashboard, you know, it's on ClickUp, it's on Stripe, it's on yeah. Google Drive. It's like, you don't see it. So it's very hard to internalize that. And I yeah. think like, for some people, it may be easier to like internalize that, which I think like Hormozzi is one of the guys that um, I look up to a lot. And he has been talking about like keeping that lifestyle down for like all that, you know, all that time, et cetera. Um, but I do agree with what you're saying to like some extent, like you need at some point to give yourself like physical and visual cues that what you're doing is like, it's it's normal. Like it's, it's, it's working. It's, 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 it's working. Real, yeah. it's, it's working. It's normal. Um, and I try, like, coming back to your question from earlier, like, how has winning changed? I would say I'm trying to be more in control of my emotions now because I felt like at the beginning I was at the mercy of winning or losing. Like, it was mm -hmm. like if I, if I won, I was very happy. But the next day I would lose, dude, that would, like, crush me. I was like, fuck, we lost a client. Like, shit, we're, yeah. like, an employee's leaving. <laughs> I was always like that, like, up and, up down, and down, up and yeah. down. Now I'm trying to kind of dollify my emotions. Like, all right, somebody's leaving, cool. Like, we're winning, Nice. Obviously, I'm gonna try and like make like celebrate a win, but I'm gonna try not celebrate it too much to a point where like, because it's just gonna come crashing back down. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, I think Nick says this. He had a really cool short video on YouTube where he says that emotional variance. He was talking about superstars and sales guys. Yeah, it's like when you win, um, the goal is not like oh shit, like oh I just made this kind of money this yeah. year on this day and I should celebrate. You know, maybe go out drink some tequila, Casamigos, whatever. <laughs> um, and then the next day, uh, maybe you 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 have to you know maybe you have to you just get a, a hit and run, or maybe you have to pay this employee who's leaving, or maybe you lose a few customers, and then you hit it up and down. Like that will actually mess up your whole performance because. You literally, because when you're feeling down, you're not going to be producing content and go out yeah. there and smile and, you know, produce, talk to your customer, to your clients, your team. You're not going to do it. So he says that, you know, if you're actually building a business, what it takes is you need to be literally neutral, right? 
yeah. you hit your biggest day, it's like cool, it's whatever. Cool. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm I'm in bed at ten, eleven midnight tonight, and I'm chilling. I'm next yeah. day. Let's go produce. And then you maybe you lose fifty grand in a day. Cool. Okay. Cool. Whatever. Um, Same thing. Next next day, and I realized this because, uh, you know, my birthday was last Thursday, and mm-hmm. happy birthday by the way. <laughs> thanks. And it literally was, I didn't do anything. Yeah. I literally did not celebrate my birthday. And this year has been yeah, shit the most successful year that I've ever. I don't, I don't yeah. even think this anything will top this year in like the kind of transformation that I've had in my life. Yeah, but it's the first year that on my birthday woke up, you know, prepared for a webinar. Yeah, did the webinar. Um, you know, we had a, a, probably our biggest day. We did like almost forty, almost over forty k in revenue in a single yeah. day, cash collected. Um, and you know, I just went to see some family a little bit, just ate and then went back home. I think I just watched a TV show yeah, and went to bed. But that's the thing. Like sometimes the thoughts, like when I get a very good win, I'm like, what? one of my first thought is like either wanting to share that with my girlfriend or like wanting to share that with friends or I want to share. Like I, I, being happy alone fucking sucks. Like when, and that brought me back to like when I, because I'm not saying like, I, I was going to say when I had nothing, not like I have everything now, like I've still got a lot of stuff to do, but like yeah. when, let's say two years ago, family was there, girlfriend was there, friends were there. And it's like now they're still there. So it's like, there, there are these anchors in my life that like I I, I always kind of come back to you, no matter whether I, I lose or win, is mm-hmm. like I, I kind of divert back to that, which for me, is, it's kind of made it real. Like it made me realize that I'm chasing wins, but sometimes just like, yeah, like I was chasing wins for the highs, but like now it's like wins are just gonna happen. Like just keep it neutral, keep keep the daily going, and yeah. it, it'll consistency. Like that's it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, uh, got a question for you actually. Yeah, how would you feel that your something? Obviously, we're two guys that that work out quite a lot. Mm-hmm. How do you feel that your physical and mental health are related? Like, how do you feel that your performance at work and the success that you have? is linked to like your physical. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you're a guy, a man who doesn't work out, I think the things you achieve in life are actually limited. Hmm. Cause I, so, so there's this thing, okay. I have this concept that yeah. to actually win in anything, you need confidence, yeah. right? I know people who are smarter than me, but I'll win more than them. Cause I have more confidence in me now. Confidence does not just come from making money. Come like because you know before I made the money, how did I get the confidence to quit my job? How did I get the confidence to to pitch a a guy to sell him services that I've never delivered on? Right? It's like I had the confidence in me that I could pull it off. Right? Even when I didn't know how to pull it off. Right? So I think that working out is so important because you literally get to see your body transform. Okay, and then when your body goes from you know maybe. A specific um you know structure or whatever to you seeing getting more muscles and you know because you know you also feel better after working out yeah. it's like you get proof that like oh my god i can actually improve yeah and then that little feedback loop that you get from like hey i work out i see results mm. and then i want to work out a little more and then it's like the same thing is happening with your confidence level in yourself it's like you start working out you get a boost in confidence and then that boost in confidence makes you want to work out a little more and then you get even more results then you get even more confidence i think that that pushes into everything that you do in life and i i personally don't know anything because even making money because making money is i mean unless you're rolling wearing a rolex driving a ferrari it's like you as a human how you look is is the first thing that people will actually tell if you're like hey okay who's this like it's the first thing that they see right so yeah. if you know that yeah. you like you know you've improved then you you see yourself you know becoming something better yeah man it turns into a beast i never thought about it that way the way you no? say like your looks are i mean without accessories like i mean you could go as far as saying naked looks like you got nothing on nothing uh, besides just your, your soul yeah, body how yeah. would one how would somebody tell like success that or, like, they exactly yeah. not so and that's that's true for me personally i think that if you're currently like not in shape yeah it's 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 hurting you so much to to a level that it's not forget about health like i don't care we're gonna die regardless i don't care if i have a six-pack or if i have a fat belly whatever it's like Mm. 
we're going to die. Like health wise, I'm not saying that, you know, just because you work out, you're going to live longer. Of course, maybe you might live longer, but I don't even care about how, how long we, you know, we live for. What I care about is how you feel while you're here. And I think that the confidence you get from being looking good is, is, is like you can't top it. Cause you yeah. know, if you're, if you're unhealthy and, you know, you know, looks wise, you're not, you're not going to want to put yourself in front of people because you're like, oh, they're going to judge me. They're going to do yeah. this. But when you have confidence that you're becoming better and you don't actually need to be, you have muscles and shit like that. Like yeah. you just have to, in your mind, you have to know that you're Im- improving and just you and your, it's because it's, it's all in our head. Like yeah. we don't, it doesn't even matter what people think about us. It's like what we think other people are thinking about, right? That matters the most. Yeah. So when you are seeing yourself going from step one, step two, step three, that because you know what's happening reality is being proven that's all you need to to actually go out into the world and to give yourself to the world and without being because you know that you're being real with yourself and you're actually evolving that's good it's interesting so especially i I like when you said that yeah just the fact that i mean it comes back i think it's probably the third time that we mentioned physical proof so far yeah but it's just probably the most the the I don't even know if that's a verb or a word, but the rawest <laughs> form of like physical proof that, yeah. that you can have is like. And yeah. and let's bring it back to people who are making more money than us. Cause I have this, I have this thing where, yeah. cause I know, I know I have a better service than most people out there, most gurus out there, <laughs> right? But one thing that they do better than me is that they have more materialistic, more lifestyle stuff that proves reality, right? Yeah. For me, I'm in my condo, 97 percent of the time yeah um yeah i just got a cool car whatever but it's not a lambo but people are watching this video yeah. if they don't see me in a lambo until they see me in a porsche in a lambo in a crazy mansion they're not going to believe the numbers that i'm doing yeah they, they need to see proof and for some reason i've noticed that it become like it kind of becomes a double-edged sword because i've met people very recently they're actually they, they they're leaving uh we're in the process with a potential client, um, they're leaving a very big agency from one guru online. Mm-hmm. And the reason, one of the reasons at least that the owner uh, listed was like, dude, they're out here showing off cars, like watches, whatever, while like we're being neglected, like in the Slack channel, like nobody takes care of us. So it's like, shit, you know, at, at what point does it become too much online to you? Like, that's the thing. Cause I, I anyways, I, I do think that somebody that takes content seriously will have a good balance between luxury and between value. And there becomes a point where a lot of people online are showing off the luxury without giving any value. Yeah, okay, it's that I totally understand. Of course, like you can't just show off stuff and have your back end be shitty, right? Yeah. That's hundred percent. And that's why I say I'm better than most people because right. uh, I did not start out by showing <laughs> off. I actually built a tangible, a good service. Yeah. So, so something good, but then I'm missing the thing because you know, as you just said, but that client is leaving. But guess what? They bought from them before they bought from you that's right so right so that's the thing that's that's the thing that i'm trying to chase it's like shit i don't want because they they spent money with that business regardless of if they didn't pay attention to them it's even worse because i was on a call with them first before these guys so it it just proves your point actually that's actually so they chose the other flashy bullshit so you buy for looks and then you you, exactly keep them on for the expertise like you retain based on the back end so gotcha. it's like, so it's like, I'm because I can't hate on the gurus. I mean, shit, I love you guys, right? But it's 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 me not playing a specific. It's a skill set that I have not yet developed, yeah. right? So it's um, they're better than me at a certain level. I mean, they're better than me, just point blank, right? So Interesting. so like for me, that's the point I'm trying to say. Because a lot of people are like, oh no, focus on being a good uh, pro- service provider. No, 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 that's not what makes you millions. Yeah. What makes you millions is showing proof that you, like showcasing in 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 the real world that you're actually succeeding in life yeah because you know i mean you, you yourself you know you if until you start driving you know uh, a, a nice car until you start doing this yeah uh you'll not really understand that you're actually making amazing money right and that's why for me like you know for this spain trip that we're going on i, yeah. I just like yo let's go crazy yeah, that's gonna be sick Let's go crazy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Because, because, and then it's going to, once we do that trip and then maybe we do it every year. Yeah. And then it's like, oh my God, like, whoa, we're in this, I don't even know how much it costs that villa, but um, 
you know, it's like 75K a month. Yeah. But it's like, yo, you go to a village 75K a month, you're, I'm not, I might move out after I come back from Spain because I'm not going back in my no. condo. <laughs> Your baseline elevates so much yeah. after an experience like that. Um, I don't know if you've ever read, it was like, one of the books that was recommended to me um, back then was actually uh, Reality Transurfing. It's one of these big bricks. Yeah. A lot of people talk about it, but I believe a lot, a lot of people like really like read it, like actually read it to understand it. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the concepts that we've talked about today kind of reflect back on that book, which there's like this whole concept of like pendulums and also your baseline, but just the pendulum itself that like it always swings back. Like life is just swinging back and forth and like mm -hmm. every high will go back down and like stuff like that. So it just leads me back to that baseline that as you up your baseline, you know, the pendulum will still swing back down, but the downs won't be as down as, you know, it was, as it it was before. before. Yeah. So the downs will keep going up. So, yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's what it comes back down to, you know, maybe who you're surrounded with. Yeah. You'll always f fall to the standards of the people around you, I think. Yeah. And it's hard too, because e both with friends and family, there's a lot of people that I'm sure same thing, you know, on your end, there's people around you, you love, you deeply love, but their sheer presence like makes you that baseline itself, like you, you can feel it inside of you just going down. Like it, yeah. it's, it's just not, it's not elevating. Like you don't feel elevated when you leave this room with that specific person. Yeah. Um, and it's about managing that. I think it's, it's about making sure that you spend more time with people with that people, elevate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, I think, you know, I put this training out on YouTube about, you know, managing your, mil you know, the million, make a million dollar by managing your schedule and your time. And yeah. I said that like, Hey, I know you love your family. I know you, you love your friends. I know you love your girlfriend. I know you, maybe you like your, you love your boyfriend, but it's like, if that person is not pushing you to be better in the thing that you're currently doing, I don't care if you guys are, you know, like, I don't care what they are yeah. to you. Just see them once a month. <laughs> yeah, like maybe what? once every six months, because because it's because because they will drain your energy and they will literally make you feel like yo, like what the hell is going on with life, you know? Yeah, and get you uh, not wanting to pay attention because you know, especially when it's family, it's like it's not like you can just push them away. It's it's family, oh. right? It's like yeah. it's, you can't do nothing about it. But you've got to realize that, like, hey, you've got to put a schedule to it so that if you know that someone is toxic, yeah, then you know, put in your schedule toxic time and put them in, in that block, but have yeah. it not be frequent. And do it mindfully, like do it with intent, go in with the intention that like you have. I think that's the main thing. A lot of us go into conversations being mindless about how we go about them. Like we go into conversations, not really thinking about the outcome of the effects of that conversation. But if you go inside of each conversation with intent, mm -hmm. whereas like you watch your thoughts and your feelings and everything while you speak with that person, you'll be able to keep yourself in check, I think a little bit better. Like that's what I've, been able to do with with you know some key people to make sure that like i'm not i'm not because like if i don't do that subconsciously you, you fall into patterns like you'll follow their patterns whereas if you always keep yourself in check mm -hmm. but it becomes back to what you were saying it's draining because you always have to keep it in check mentally you have to be on whereas like if you're with people that you know are higher like you can be a little bit more off mentally and, like it wouldn't it wouldn't really affect you that much yeah cool so now that you've um that you've scaled your agency you know um what what are you what do you plan on gifting yourself yeah that's a good question man um i mean car 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 is going to be the first thing yeah um watch eventually like i i'd want that but uh bef i mean one of the short longer term things is, is probably going to be like more travel yeah 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 i want to experience more stuff every time i've traveled so far it, exposing myself to new cultures and like people mm -hmm. it just makes me think differently like i just see a different it, it, it's really funny to me because like i i've had this but before really traveling a lot i've had this view of the world was like very linear like is, is the way i view the world is the way the world is yeah but then you, you start traveling and you speak with people and you realize like they're just like you but they're viewing the world differently like they're they're, they're same humans as you but like th just the fact that where they were born yeah th their view of the world is so different like that's yeah. what i experienced in spain actually just by the pace of working like how, how people just are like the the the, the kind of afternoon nap you know that a lot mm -hmm. of people were taking and like everything is later like people like breakfast is pretty much the same time but like lunch I mean, a lot of people don't eat lunch and like dinner was like very late 
It's yeah. like shit. Like that's yeah, yeah. it's not something we do here. Like we eat at like what? I don't know, yeah, like six, 6 p.m. maybe. Yeah. Like it's like the average. There's like eight, eight thirty, nine. You know, the people eat late. Yeah. Uh, or at least the people that I was around with. Yeah. Um, Miami was like completely different. That was more like people don't give a fuck about you. I felt like some very cold vibes. Honestly, <laughs> when I went to like especially Miami <laughs> Beach, is like people are out for each other. Like it, that one, I was like, ah, I'm not too sure about that one. That's like yeah. a little bit more harsh. Um, but I think. Yeah, Eastern culture specifically, something I want to get to know a little bit more because yeah. I feel like I relate a little bit more to the traditional Eastern culture type of things. Yeah, I think traveling is, I mean, for me, it's like I don't necessarily have to travel to to know what you're talking about because yeah. I spent, you know, 60% of my time, uh, you know, right. I, was, I was born in Rwanda, so I spend my time there. Um, so I, like, I kind of have, like, two lives. Yeah. I've lived two lives. I've good. been in, yeah. So, so, like, I know. I know both worlds. And... Um, and yeah, I don't eat at 6 p.m. either. I mm. eat at like 8, 10, that's 9, 9, yeah. 9, 9, 9 p.m. Because, yeah. Uh, but no, for sure. Worldview, especially when you get to see like the way that the, like life goes into, others, into other parts of the world. Yeah. You kind of like get a good perspective to not get too caught up in the in your own little bubble. Yeah. Because I've realized that like, you know, for me, the thing that, you know, I could... I could win today. I could win this year. Next year, let's say everything crashes. Like, I'm not going to be affected that much because no. it's like, I know there is worse. And I, I always try to keep in mind that like, yo, we're winning, but this is really a game. This is more like a, a scoreboard that, you know, can go up and down, but it's not really, it's not, my life is not dictated to how good, how well I yeah. do in business. You know, it's like, I'm already good just by being here, whatever, yeah. in the moment, being alive, being healthy. But, business is really just like a you know a hobby of mine yeah. where i'm like you know let me let me go make a few millions can i do it oh yeah I can. yeah okay cool nice <laughs> nice nice man i yeah, mean cool. i i think we all started with the initial goal of like not working i don't know about you i i, I might be talking you know out of place here but like for me specifically it was like dude i want to work i want to make as much money as possible as fast as possible that so mm -hmm. that way like i can do whatever the fuck i want like that yeah. was kind of the typical mindset for me going into that but then as i'm doing i'm like I, I've started asking myself these questions seriously because I was seeing myself removing more and more aspects of the business, not to a point where I don't have to work, but to a point where I'm like, I could see it, you know, coming true at some point. And I was asking myself, what am I going to do? Because there was a time where I was working so much. It was like, I had nothing, no identity besides work. It was work. <laughs> like, yeah. Justin was work. Like, if there was no work, who am I? Yeah. What am I going to be doing? So now I'm starting to get more into like, add some more stuff already in my life so that if there comes a point where I can actually choose to step away for a little while, I'm not going to be empty. Like, I'm still going to have some stuff like sports. Like, I've got back into hockey recently. Like, there's yeah. a lot of stuff I'm getting back into. Stuff from my childhood that I liked a lot. Stop doing. But, I, yeah. I totally get the the part of, like, when you're getting, when you're working a lot, you end up being work mode focused and you literally become the work. Yeah, you're consumed. Um, but, yeah. I mean, for me, it's a bit different. Um, I, I've never really had this perspective like hey let me make a lot of money so that i never like yeah. have to work to me personally i've wanted to get in business just because i wanted to drive nice cars uh, and be you know a little free yeah. to what i want but right now i'm playing for confidence i just want the belief in myself to be like just like a, a kind of belief in myself that i don't even know if it's possible like for me the thing that is drives me the most is knowing like yo you're doing this yeah like there is there is there is no amount of money like you can give me to trade the belief I have in myself. Like you could put a hundred million right now on this table, maybe a hundred million is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you could put a lot of money on the table. Yeah. And I would pick, hey, I'll I'll go do it myself. Cause the belief and the confidence in myself that I'll develop by achieving this 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 target is gonna be way worth sure. way more than the actual thing that I end up earning. Yeah. Right. So that has been for me right now. I'm trying to play. So like every time I hit a milestone, I'm like, okay, what's the next one? Yeah. Not because I'm I'm constantly chasing money, but because I'm constantly chasing more confidence in myself. I yeah. want to I want to feel fucking good. Yeah. I want to I want I want to feel like hey, Serge, like you're you've done it and you've done it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you it's 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 like there is not given to you. It's not like nobody can take it away from you. You know, and you know for sure maybe but it it doesn't also another thing is a lot of people want to win because they come from insecurity but it's like for me it has never really been that i'm more of a person who's like who's i think that 
everything it's not a zero sum game yeah. meaning like there is actually no losing in this game of life mm. so i don't necessarily play to not lose i play to literally just like win i just want to win yeah. right uh but um something that i wanted to to talk about was um i forgot <laughs> but um what maybe another question that i had for you is uh, what's your goal for this uh for the next three three to six months Re- uh, revenue wise size of business and um maybe yeah. other things besides business i definitely want to get the business to seven figures um that's for sure but i want to be able to have a team where as i said like i'm not necessarily needed like i i choose to be there is more of a choice i i've got something it might be like a deep issue but i've i've always i've always hated authority mm-hmm. i don't like it like at all any forms of authority i i i reject like i i don't like and if i think that there's still a piece where i am still a bit of a like a customer or, or like an employee to a boss, you know, because at the end of the day, like you're, you're still like your clients are, are you're like your bosses to some extent, like you, you still have people to serve. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I still feel that like there's, there's a certain aspect that like definitely requires me, obviously as a founder, I'm probably, but I would have to hire like a CEO or like a, an operator or something to really start removing myself. Um, but at least I want to have the choice. Like I, w- I want to have the choice to consciously do it. So that's the goal. Like th- there's it's kind of two goals side by side. It's like, yes, I want to get to the seven figure level, but um, also definitely like having the choice for the team is uh, going to be a big one. But, but when are we going to hit that seven figure mark? Dude, I'd love, I'd love like, I, w- I would dare to say this, this year, but. But why do you say, why do you have to say, but? I don't know, man. I'm always like conservative, but stop the butt like i could say this no, year but, yeah yeah it's, it's been the goal like in 2021 i set myself the goal for this year to hit it um that's you, it. you could hit it in the next 60 days yeah probably yeah. yeah i can see it working like right now the systems are clear is is i actually wrote that thought the other day on a drill and i was like getting from you know the beginning to just a couple thousand dollars per month it was like mm-hmm. it's just about understanding the doing like you don't know shit you don't know how to outreach you don't know how the team works you don't know how to deliver service you don't know anything and now it's like you know everything or you know at least most of it you just have to do more of the same thing mm-hmm. it's pretty much simple like at this this point in time we have to just do more of the same thing and then at some point i'll be able to refine back the like the back end or whatever but like right now like we're good retention's good everything's good we yeah. just need to do more of that same thing yeah 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 for me it's like yeah just just to rush to seven figures what about you and then um stay 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 there settle let the ground settle uh for me personally um so i just want to i just want to hit numbers numbers um Hmm. um, i'd say that my goal is to i want to get the main offer to half a mil a month sure and uh, I want to build a back end pushing at least a quarter of a million per month. Sure. So I want to, I want to check, check this out. This is my timeline on success. Okay. Or at least financial success. Yeah. First year, you know, did almost half a mil. This year we hit seven figures. We're going to do one point something. Um, next year I want to do eight. Sure. I want to hit the eight figure run rate. I'm not going to do 10 mil next year. It might be a little tricky to do that, <laughs> but I want to I want to be an eight figure company by the end of 2023. Yep. And then after that, I'm going to need like two years of just relaxing and because I'm- It's a push. Oh my God. It's bro. a goddamn push. It's, it's, it's something. It's definitely yeah. something. Because it's like you you have to like build, like it's because the thing with, with business. So let's say, let's compare it to like uh, working out, right? When you're working out, it's like you have to, to, to go work out, exercise your muscle, break, tear whatever fibers, whatever, yeah. and then let them let them you know just recover, yeah. and then they become a bit stronger, bigger, and then you can go push heavier weight, right? Mm. But when it comes to business, it's to, it's not the same thing. It's like you actually have to go push the weight that you're not able to push before you can actually figure out how to actually push the weight. Hmm. So for me, I rarely ever like be like oh let me figure out how to make a million a month and then i'll go and make a million a month no i'm like no let's do a million a month and then we'll figure out a way to sustain a million a month okay 
So that's that's my target. So that's my way of thinking. It's like I set a goal. I don't know how to hit it, but we'll hit it regardless. And then once I hit it, I'm like, okay, cool. This is what got us to to half a mil, 200 grand a month, a quarter of a million or whatever. And then I'll figure out the infrastructure that got us there. And then I'll just remove anything that is not actually a leveraged activity. So yeah. anything that's inefficient, I'll remove it and I'll just replace replace the 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 it by an infrastructure with the top three things or the top four or five things that actually help us produce the activities that cool. create a quarter of a million, a million a month. So but I wanna rush the first three years and then I'm a I wanna take I wanna take a I I wanna take a break. Yeah. So so for me it's, it's, it's that that's really my plan. Cool. Um but um love it. But yeah. Uh, parfait. Donc, euh, on vient de changer le podcast euh, en français. <rire> euh, on avait oublié de, de mettre cette partie au début, mais on va le mettre euh, vers la fin. Euh, you know, la majorité des gens ne savent pas. Ben, C'est sûr qu'une partie va vont savoir, partie, mais ouais. on, est, on est du Québec. Ouais. Donc, on parle français. Um, actually, quelque chose que je voulais te demander. Comment, parce que toi, un certain pourcentage de tes clients sont francophones. Oui. Right? Ouais. Et comment, comment tu trouves ça? Um, J'aime ça honnêtement. Euh, ça a apporté beaucoup de challenge au départ parce que trouver de la main d'œuvre qui parle français à part... Euh, parce que tu, tu sors du Québec puis tu n'as pas nécessairement des gens qui comprennent la culture québécoise. Donc, c'est difficile. Mm -hmm. um, D'un point de vue main d'œuvre, c'était compliqué. Puis sinon, j'ai juste trouvé ça naturel pour moi d'essayer d'aller vers des gens québécois. Je veux dire, avec le, 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 le outreach puis tout le, le, le marketing qu'on faisait, la majorité c'était en anglais, mais je faisais une partie minime de ça en français. Puis ouais. les résultats étaient comme 30 fois ce que, ce que, ce que j'avais ouais. avec la marche anglais. Pourquoi? Ouais. Parce que je résonne mieux. J'ai l'accent. Fait que j'ai la connexion. Il euh, n'y a pas beaucoup de monde non plus parce qu'on apporte une, une, on apporte une philosophie vraiment américaine dans un marché qui n'est pas encore là. Mm -hmm. euh, au Québec, j'ai l'impression que c'est souvent en retard sur ouais. le marché américain, surtout dans, dans l'e-commerce, dans le marketing, tout ça. Euh, donc, c'était nouveau. Puis, je pense que cette approche a quand même bien résonné. Tu sais, 40 de nos clients sont au Québec, par exemple, présentement. Ah ouais. Fait que, ben, je dis ça, je pense que c'est un peu moins maintenant. Je pense que c'est plus rendu 30 ouais. euh, Depuis qu'on expand, on, on, quand on grandit, c'est vraiment plus dans les États-Unis, UK, ouais. euh, Israël. On est rendu avec une coupe aussi de drôlement. Wow. Euh, mais bref, ouais. Ouais, là, j'imagine que si tu veux croître ta compagnie à, à des gros chefs, il va falloir que tu ne peux pas vraiment stay too much dans le marché francophone parce non. que le marché est juste est juste pas est juste pas là comme c'est pas aussi gros que qu'ailleurs dans le monde right tu peux pas créer de demande à un moment donné yeah. même avec choix. nos marques c'est la première tu sais j'ai jamais eu ce problème avec les, avec nos, nos e-commerce à l'extérieur du Québec avec nos marques québécoises on atteint le cap des audiences sur wow. Facebook TikTok ou Google Puis on se retrouve avec certaines marques qui dépensent beaucoup euh, des marques par exemple qui dépensent 1000 dollars et plus par jour euh, la, la, la fréquence devient 4 en comme 3 jours. Wow. C'est 3-4 jours. Ça, ça, le monde voit les mêmes pubs over and over parce qu'il n'y a juste pas personne. Il n'y a ouais. pas personne à, à targeter. C'est les mêmes, les mêmes gens. Ouais. Fait que c'est ça. Ouais. Ouais, j'ai une, you know, une certaine audience des gens qui veulent que, qui veulent que je crée euh, le programme en français. Mais je suis ouais. comme... Oui, c'est sûr que je peux, je peux créer le programme en français. Mais le problème avec ça, c'est que euh, tu sais, mon équipe sont tous anglophones. Fait que, ouais. fait que je ne vais pas bâtir une offre, puis c'est juste ça va juste être moi qui peux communiquer. Le, genre, je ne veux, veux pas bâtir une compagnie si ouais. c'est juste moi qui peux livrer le service. Tu comprends? Donc, ça ne fait pas de sens. Ouais. Il y a un opportunity cost qui est quand même grand. Mais, par contre, ce que j'aimerais faire, c'est que, après avoir dominé tout le marché anglophone, ouais. j'aimerais définitivement euh, commencer puis à bâtir un programme dans le marché québécois, marché, dans la France et tout. Parce que je crois que ça te donnerait un, un ST Edge. <rire> ouais. Puis ouais. quelque chose que beaucoup de gens... Parce que la majorité des gens, s'ils peuvent launch un, 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 un programme anglais, c'est juste le programme. Donc, ouais. leur marché aussi limité, mais si tu parles plusieurs langues, tu peux... Ouais. D'un point de vue d'expertise aussi, ça paraît bien parce que les clients québécois aiment ça voir que tu as une expérience à l'extérieur du Québec. Parce que la majorité des gens, même au Québec, vont penser un peu... Ben, de, de mon expérience, les gens avec lesquels je parle ont déjà l'ambition de sortir du Québec. C'est rare que j'ai entendu quelqu'un qui dit « Hey, je veux vendre toute ma vie juste au Québec. Mm. » Ils ont des idées de grandeur, puis souvent, ça va demander d'aller du moins dans le Canada anglais, l'Ontario, tout ça, ouais. ou d'aller aux États-Unis. Fait 
quand, quand, quand on arrive d'un point de vue d'entreprise, tu te dis, hey, on a l'expérience dans les deux. Et le marché québécois, par exemple, et le marché à l'extérieur, ils aiment ça parce qu'ils voient l'opportunité, s'ils ne l'ont pas déjà faite, de les aider à aller dans de nouveaux marchés. Puis vice-versa. Tu parles de ça, c'est un petit plus pour les clients anglais de dire, hey, on domine aussi tel autre marché. Tu sais, on a deux ouais. marchés. Um, c'est quelque chose de gros dans le, dans, dans le monde des artistes présentement que je vois dans la musique. Il y a beaucoup d'artistes qui commencent à traduire leurs chansons dans d'autres mm. euh, langues ou des, 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 des films aussi ou des séries comme par exemple Squid Game qui était une des séries tu sais, avec tellement de succès mais c'est parce qu'ils l'ont traduit dans plusieurs langues. Oh. Le même concept s'applique je pense à notre service. C'est-à-dire une expertise dans plusieurs euh, marchés te fait paraître juste simplement mieux. C est, c est, c est, c est, ton influence est plus grande. 100%. Ouais. Puis, ouais, je crois que, tu sais, il y a une, quand même une facilité de, de partir de zéro à, par exemple, six chefs par année. Ouais. Si tu commences dans le marché francophone que si tu vas dans le marché anglophone parce que, euh, tu sais, il y a, y, a, y a un truc de, comme, you know, the market becomes numb to ouais. à une certaine offre. Ouais. Comme les gens, s'ils se font pitch à chaque jour pour la même chose, puis toi, tu fais juste commencer de copier puis tu vas vendre la même chose, ben, ça va être dur pour toi de, de croître ton agence de marketing ou whatever. Fait que, tu sais, si tu débutes puis tu essaies de, you know, de trouver un, ton premier you know, succès, commence dans le marché francophone puis dès que tu as assez de, de capital puis tu es capable de, 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 de payer pour avoir une équipe pour t'aider ouais. à trouver des clients ailleurs dans le monde, ben, fais ça parce que... Ouais. Je ne l'ai pas mentionné tantôt, mais tu sais, jusqu'au jusqu mois d'août, euh, fin du mois de juillet 2021, c'était 100% des clients québécois. Mmh. Non, mais j'étais juste québécois. Je okay. pas de clients à l'extérieur. C'est là, là que ça a commencé à ouais. vraiment s'étendre. Puis là... Ouais. Ouais. Un problème que je rencontre avec le, le problème d'avoir de, des clients au Québec et au Canada, <rire> c'est le, les taxes. <rire> c'est un problème. Parce que, pas, pas parce que je ne veux pas payer le, le 10-15%, ouais. mais c'est parce que je n'ai même pas encore set up le, le process de, de, de collecter ça. Oui, c'est... Moi, moi, tous les clients canadiens qu'on a, il faut qu'on les build. TPS, TVQ, euh, mais tous les clients internationaux dans le nom. C'est là que ça devient un peu une logistique administrative de faire en ça. sorte que tu as, as les deux. Mais le problème, c'est que la majorité de mes employés sont qui ne sont pas au Canada, fait qu'ils ne connaissent rien de ça, mais moi non plus, je ne suis pas vraiment la personne la plus administrative. Ouais. J'ai lâché l'école dans mon programme d'administration. <rire> fait que... Ouais, c'est ça. Fait que, fait que ouais, c'est pour ça que, ouais, je crois que je vais devoir trouver des, des employés ici parce que... Au moins un. Euh, au moins, exact. Au, au moins, moins un. un c'est si ce que regarde ça. Ouais. Puis que t'es quelqu'un qui peut ouais, gérer ça. les operations. On regarde celle-là, là. Si t'es euh, québécois, puis tu as besoin de gérer les opérations. Si t'es capable de gérer les opérations... He's ouais. your man. Hit me up, hit me up. C'est en anglais, <rire> though, mais, euh, mais ouais, ça devrait être chill. Mais ouais, Good. non, mais ouais, non, c'est nice. Mais je, je, crois, je vois vraiment comme un, un delay avec le, le marché francophone. Ouais. Parce que, tu sais, parfois, comme j'ai beaucoup de, de gens qui, qui peut-être qui ont été avec, à, à la même école que moi ou ouais. qui ont été au même travail que moi, qui me demandent genre, hey, euh, je veux faire ça, qu'est-ce que tu fais, bla bla bla. Mais c'est parce que comme, je sais pas comment t'expliquer ce que je fais. Ouais. Parce que c'est pas c'est pas comme si ça existe pas depuis long, un bout. Ça fait quoi que ça fait quoi que, que le truc qu'on fait Ça fait peut-être quelques deux trois années que ça existe cette industrie ou ouais. peut-être quatre. On max. dit mettons c'est ça quatre cinq gros max là. Tu sais, c est, c est, ouais. Fait que fait qu'il y a pas assez de références pour que je puisse te dire oh va checker ça va checker ça. Puis encore pire il y a pas ça dans le marché francophone. Fait que toutes pas. les références vont être dans le marché anglophone. Ouais. Fait que pour moi, c'est pour ça que moi, c'est vraiment dur pour moi de pouvoir expliquer ce qu'on fait. Ouais. Euh, comme à, à, à des gens qui, qui, sont, qui étaient dans mon cercle avant. Tu sais, si on, on, on termine, je pense, en parlant de, de juste la mentalité tout court ici par rapport à ça aussi, c'est beaucoup différent. Je pense que je, je, je vois, il y, y a deux choses que je vois. Il y en a une, c'est le frein, un peu le, le, le frein mental où côté argent, je trouve que c'est plus difficile d'en parler ici. C'est plus difficile d'en parler au Québec. C'est plus difficile de... Euh, les gens ont besoin à rêver, j'ai l'impression. Puis c'est triste. C'est vraiment triste de voir ça. Euh, mais bref, c'est quelque chose que j'ai remarqué. Mm -hmm. On a besoin, je pense, plus de monde ici qui se lance en affaires. Puis, tu sais, la demande est là. Je veux dire, le marché est là. Il so, faut juste que le monde cool. le fasse. Ouais. Euh, puis, d'un autre côté, c'est... Les gens sont juste, puis je dis pas ça, c'est vraiment pas en fait, ça va sonner négatif, ça ne l'est pas, sont ignorants d'une façon où ils n'ont pas accès en fait 
à ces, ces, ces connaissances-là. Ils n'ont pas... Tout, tout ce qu'on parle, les gourous américains, les etc., tout ça, ils font pas de pub au Québec. Il n'y a pas de ça. Le, le monde, il ne voit même pas. Ouais. Fait que l'intérêt n'est pas là. Le, le, le monde, ils ne savent juste pas que ça existe. Ouais. Fait que c'est... c'est S'ils ne savent pas, comment est-ce que tu, tu, tu expectes que ces gens-là vont bon, euh, vouloir, ouais. vouloir le faire? Ouais. C'est comme il n'y a personne qui crée le désert, right? Ils ne savent pas. Um, j'ai, j'ai parlé à tellement des commerçants qualifiés directement pour travailler avec nous au Québec qui, d'un point de vue publicité en ligne, là, on est encore au stage où on booste des posts. Oh, wow. um, on ne sait même pas, en fait, c'est quoi le ads manager. Euh, on ne par, par, commence même pas de TikTok. Là. Je veux dire, TikTok, c'est une nouvelle... Euh, Il y, y en a beaucoup encore qu'on est dans ce stade-là. Ouais. Euh, fait que c'est pour ça qu'on va toujours voir les, les Américains f- faire plus d'argent, avoir plus de succès, etc. Ouais. Ils sont là avant. C'est tout. 100%, 100%, ouais. Ben, écoute, nous, on fait notre partie. Oui, non, définitivement. On, on l'a fait live, là. Euh, on l'a fait live, là, 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 là. <rire> Fait que si tu vois ce, cette, euh, ces petites vidéos puis tu te demandes genre, « Ah, oh, qu'est-ce que je devrais faire? » Bla, bla, bla. Ah, oh, je suis tanné de mon 9 à 5. Mm-hmm. Je me fais pas payer assez. » Écoute, dans la vie, personne ne va jamais te payer assez, OK? Ce que les gens doivent réaliser, c'est que la seule façon... En fait, tout court, tu peux pas être payé assez parce que tu sacrifies ta vie pour quelque chose, all right? Ouais. Il n'y a, a pas un montant d'argent qui peut couvrir la valeur de la vie. Fait que pour, c'est, pour, c'est pour ça que moi, quand les gens disent, « Ah, oh, euh, je ne fais pas assez d'argent, bla, 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 je suis comme, « Bro, tu ne vas jamais faire assez d'argent. » C'est quoi que tu ne réalises pas? Tu es en train de trade des années, des secondes, des minutes, des heures, des jours que tu ne vas jamais avoir. C'est une valeur, tu as zéro leverage. J'ai juste le mot en anglais, mais tu n'as pas de levier. Tu n'as rien de ça, en fait. T'as... Fait que... Fait que si tu, si tu veux vraiment comme être libre financièrement ou euh, pouvoir juste gagner bien ta vie mm. euh, et pouvoir faire ce que tu veux, parce que c'est possible. You know, c'est comme, tu sais, les chiffres qu'on voit en ligne présentement, il y a des gens qui font, you know, des 100 000 par mois, des 500 000 par mois, des millions ouais. par mois, des 500 000 par jour. Des gens qui, qui, sont, qui ont le même âge que nous, right? Ouais. Um, Puis, mais le problème, c'est qu'il faut que tu veuilles, il faut que tu ailles chercher l'information, il faut que tu sois assez discipliné pour pouvoir implémenter sur ce que tu apprends. Exact. Puis il faut que tu sois aussi patient pour que, euh, pour que tu puisses euh, voir les résultats. Mais, mais ouais, il y a une opportunité insane en ligne, guys. Que ce soit advertising, euh, marketing en général, que ce soit, euh, you know, appointment setting, je ne sais même pas comment <rire> le dire en français. En vente même, de ouais. dire juste au Québec, c'est bon vendeur. Je veux dire, on a encore, tu regardes les vendeurs aussi au Québec, c'est vraiment, euh, c'est old school euh, car selling. Tu sais, on, on vend un char, puis c'est, euh, c'est du hard sell. Je veux dire, il wow. y a beaucoup, beaucoup de places que tu peux... C'est pas compliqué. Tu t'en vas aux États-Unis, tu regardes ce qu'ils font, tu l'apportes au Québec, tu c'est le traduis ça. en français, tu le fais, tu l'adaptes à la culture québécoise, tu le fais, ça marche. Ça marche, ouais. C'est, c'est aussi ça. simple que ça. Ouais. Fait que euh, passe ton temps sur YouTube, euh, cherche quelqu'un qui fait <rire> beaucoup d'argent. Euh, peut-être que c'est Justin, peut-être que c'est moi. <rire> <rire> euh, puis juste, juste suis, puis, puis ouais. apprends. Juste, juste stick to the script. Ouais. Juste euh, passe du temps à apprendre beaucoup. De... Mais ce que je peux dire pour vrai, c'est que moi, ce que j'aime pas, c'est cette. C'est cette c'est cette culture derrière l'éducation traditionnelle. Ouais. C'est comme, il y a toujours des gens qui pensent réellement que comme, t'es supposé aller à l'école, t'es supposé finir, avoir un diplôme, bla 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 bla. C'est sûr, il y a certains domaines où c'est, c'est nécessaire. On a besoin ouais. de médecins, on a besoin de, d'avocats, exact, whatever. Exact. Mais, si ton but, c'est de faire du cash, comme le, on le dirait au Québec, <rire> <rire> t'as plus besoin de l'aller à l'école. 100%. Je peux littéralement te... te te, te nommer 10 rôles live où tu peux faire 10 000 à 25 000 par mois en moins de 6 mois. Ah, oh, 100 Mais, tu sais, il y, y a des... Combien de, 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 de jobs sur le marché qui peuvent te payer 10 à 25 000 par mois? Mais ça, il faut l'accepter, par exemple. Et là, il y a le problème. Je pense que les gens ne ouais, l'acceptent pas, pas C'est ça, mais c'est, c'est parce que... C'est une question d'ego aussi. Puis de, je pense d'un ego culturel, de dire « ça se peut pas ouais. ». C'est pas vrai, ça c'est se peut comme, pas, c'est, c'est un comme mensonge. Un c'est ouais, c'est, 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 c'est un trop beau pour être vrai. Ouais. C'est, euh, ben non, tu sais, pourquoi? Si, si c'était vrai, pourquoi est-ce que tout le monde ne ferait pas? Il <rire> y a beaucoup de ça, je pense. Ouais. Puis c'est juste, lance-toi en premier. Essaie-le pour toi. Je te dis, ça se peut que ça marche pas. Essaie-le. Ouais. Tu verras. Ouais. All right, uh, we're back again. We had to put in a, a little French, uh, you know, version of this, uh, this, uh, this talk. Yeah. Uh, but, um, 
but yeah, just wanting to end it. Uh, I'm not sure if you had any last thing that you wanted to share with people who are watching this. Maybe uh, let's say if you had to say something to the you of last year, um, maybe three lessons that you've that hmm. that if you had to pick three lessons that would get them to cut in half the 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 timeline for yep. your for your growth. Um, the first one is take notes. I've always tried and relied on my mind. I always thought I was somebody who remembered things quite easily, and I did. But taking notes, like taking notes of things, that's been one of the game changers. Like I've carried my phone now, and I have like a specific note-taking system, which allows me to remember a bunch of things. Like I get ideas at the most random places. Like mm -hmm. when I take a walk, dude, I'm on the toilet. I get like the best ideas in the world. Like it just it just comes like randomly. Yeah. So taking notes. Um, other one is don't be scared to spend. Like I was, when I first started making a little bit of money with the business, I wanted to hold on to it like as much as possible. I was scared to lose it. I was like, I finally have something to lose. Yeah. Like I want to keep it very close, which led to me probably missing out on like, yeah, just staying stagnant for like a lot of eight growth. months. Yeah. yeah. So I missed out on growth. So that's one. Uh, that's actually second. And I would say the third one is, is dude, it's, it's going to sound so cliche, but like team is everything. I'm realizing it now. Like there are team members that actually, I would have been better off like not hiring them. Like there are some that like, it's bad, like bad hires, it happens. Like somewhere I was like, I would have been better off doing it myself. But the good ones, dude, they do things that I'm just amazed by like what they, they can think about. Mm -hmm. So I've just, yesterday I gave a bonus to one of my team members just because like he did like two or three like very good things that that, you know, made me think like, wow, like yeah. that's that's very, very nice like that you thought of that. Like in the last couple of weeks, give him a bonus. So it's like team, invest in a team. 100%. Yeah. I think team is probably the the fastest way to grow a company. Yep. Just hire people, decision makers, people who are smart labor and, you know, maybe labor. But uh but yeah, I think people anyone who's stuck below 50k a month, maybe even 30k a month is because they don't have a team. Yep. That's the only way you get past six figures a month. Um but yeah, thank you for those for those three things. Yeah. Um we're going to end this year. Uh yep. for Everyone who enjoyed this, uh, you can go follow Justin on his Instagram. You want to? Yeah, at uh, Justin Laronzo, J U S T N L A L O N D E. Or, same thing, you know, if I, if I also post that on my end, go and give Serge a follow. You want to give your at? Uh, Serge Guitari. Yeah. There you go. But um, yeah, this was amazing. Uh, maybe we might do another one when we're in Spain. Yeah. That'd be nice yeah. with the new camera setup. Yeah. And yeah, we could do it with a, with a glass of with a tequila or something like yeah, that. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool, man. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching this. It was definitely a long one. <laughs>